I think I think maybe because my uh, my headphones are Bluetooth ones, so I think that might have had some something to do with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do sound a lot clearer now, so that's better. Yeah. And to be fair, so do you. I could hear you all right, but then you started going all robotronic on me. Yeah, so. proper robot, mate. Proper robot. Yeah. Well, I can see I can see this man cave you've got here now. It looks absolutely immense. It yeah, looks so my, good. My um, my brother described it. Bearing in mind he ne- he's never served, but obviously um, seen photos of me away on tour and things like that. He says that this is how he sort of imagines what like a fob would be like, with yeah, yeah, flags yeah. up and and what have you. Yeah. But hundred um, percent, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is um, <laughs> what I named the shedio because this is my shed slash studio, which is quite funny because um, <laughs> so anytime my missus wants to get rid of anything in the house it's like yeah. can i put it in the shed it's like no you can't there's no room <laughs> it's like can, can you put your bike in the shed no it nah. can stay outside and i'll lock it up it's fine <laughs> awesome awesome yeah, so before, for for those that are listening and now watching because i'm cool like that we we did about a good 10 15 minutes there of, of, of chatting away um we were discussing the fact that my daughters are being pain in the asses tonight. Uh, Phil's um, little rascal <laughs> is still running around somewhere. <laughs> but what, but, but one night we were supposed to be in bed early. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, it, oh, it's always the way. It's always yeah, yeah. the way with uh, with the podcast as well. Um, unfortunately, my my brother is spo- usually does the show with us. We do it as a three way. He's in um, Hereford. Uh, I'm All not right. sure where you are at the moment. I'm in Huddersfield in West Yorkshire. He's up north, isn't he? Um, I'm up and I'm, north, isn't he? I couldn't be further away from either of you. I'm in Kent. So um, <laughs> yeah, this is why I this is why I like format that I use for the podcast because I can get guests like yourself on. Yeah. yeah. Um, last night I had um, a guest, uh, Rob Ingram, who does McDojo Life, who Where's basically it? goes and um, confronts fake martial artists and things like that is genuinely one of the best guests I've had on. But he's, he's, really? in, he's, in, he's in Florida. So I've got, you know, I'm able to connect with all sorts of people. And That's it, it's awesome. Just, it's, it's, just, it's just grow from strength to strength. And I say it pretty much every episode. My avid listeners are probably going, Tomo, you're boring now, mate. But from what I started... <laughs> As me sat in the shed on my own, talking to myself, basically, to um, get myself out of this rut that I was in. My depression hit me uh, quite hard and I was stuck, basically. And yeah, um, I was saying to uh, Rob yesterday how um, finding a new passion and something that I actually look forward to doing has um fucking taking me out of this fucking rut i'm back to almost my normal self i'm still um as the girls call them taking my happy pills um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but I, i'm on i'm on the way up and now i get to interview back the nominated directors 100 <laughs> percent. yes here we are thank you here we are. <laughs> that's yeah um we should have won. No, I'm kidding. No, it was, yeah, I mean, it's, like I said, it's an honour to, to, to speak to you, you know, and it was, I was sort of surprised when you asked me if I wanted to come on because I thought, well, what can I, what can I kind of offer to, to, to you, to your show? Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm honoured anyway to, to, to speak to you and stuff. So, yeah, thank you. Do you know what? I, I, it's refreshing to hear things like that. Um, just, just just shows how down to earth you are because you're actually a fucking top quality director. You're doing things like SAS Who Dares Wins, fucking yeah. Ambulance. Uh, yeah. Was it Skin Skin Britain or something like that you did as well? I did Skin, I did Skin Britain, Benefit Street. I've got um, a film about Tyson Fury coming on next Thursday on ITV. You know, I, I just Gypsy saw King. the advert for that. I didn't realise you were. I, I saw the photo of you with uh, Tyson. Yeah, yeah. Um, I put yeah. that on. on on the gram, but um, yeah, yeah. So that that's that. I'm looking mean, forward to some, that. Yeah, mate. It's, I mean, uh, uh, again, mental health discussed quite a lot in it, and um, an incredible man, incredible spokesperson for mental health because he's been through it, 
and he's seen the other side, you know what I mean? And he's, he's yeah, come yeah. back from the brink himself. He's been at the top of the world and he's been at the very, very bottom of the world. So he's yeah, an yeah, incredible, uh, incredible I, I, person for a show. I, 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 I have him up there as on, on, a, on a huge pedestal, me. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just because I'm a I'm a I'm a big boxing fan anyway, and I just think he's yeah, yeah, yeah. a fucking brilliant. We just we just um, just down to where you are. We're doing all these different things and helping me out now by my um coming up coming on to my small little podcast that I've got. It's just it's just and brilliant, it's and um and a lot of people asked me recently. They've been like. How do you get these people onto your podcast? And I'm like, <laughs> well, I asked. And I, like, what, what do you mean? I went, well, as as you as you most people do with with hot chicks and things like that, I slide into their DMs and say, do you want to come on my show? <laughs> what What's the worst that they can do is either say no or just ignore it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I think the worst the worst thing that people can do is leave you on scene. And then just ignore this oh, look, yeah, and yeah. then just leave it. And I think that's so rude. But, <laughs> you know, such is the yeah. such is the world, isn't it? At least have a conversation is, with a person. It just just is is what it is these days. It is what um, it is. <laughs> yeah. So uh, here's a question that I was going to ask you. So yes. I've I've noticed the uh, the main the main guys of SNC Days wins at the minute are um, at a secret location doing something. Is yes, that for the British audience or is it for, for someone else? Or aren't you allowed to say? Um, I think I'm allowed to say. As far as, I, as, far as I'm aware, it's for, um, it's for Australian television, as far as I'm ah, aware. Okay. So, so I think there's another series going to be made um, for the Australian uh, networks. And um, I think oh, they're course, down there. They've got, they've got very similar, haven't they? They've got they've got an SAS over there, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. So so, so I think that's what the I think that's what the the thing is. Um, so yeah. So I mean that would be hugely. Ex- I think it's hugely exciting anyway. Because the the amazing thing about RSS um, is obviously it's sold around the world. So people from all over the world do actually watch the show, and and we do do sort of get messages from all around the world. I mean, especially obviously the the main guys Ant and. Billy, Ollie, uh, now Jay, um, and Foxy. Um, so I think it's brilliant that the format's been able to be sold and replicated around the world. Yeah, and I guess they're down there to sort of make sure that it's as authentic as it possibly can be. So, yeah. yeah Hopefully I'll get, it's a, just I'll get a, a phone call to go down there myself and have a, have a play uh, with the cameras. Uh, in but <laughs> I've asked Billy it. already. <laughs> get amongst it. Yeah, um, I have. I, I put my name forward, but it's a, I mean it's a long way to go, but still it would be awesome. It would be amazing. A hundred percent. And yeah. Yeah. it's just a fucking brilliant show and, and I appreciate that. I love and tell you what, mate, I tell you what, I I absolutely love making it. It's one of my favourite things that I make throughout the year. And I really look forward to it. And and I I think before I started working on it, I was a bit probably a bit scared of going to take to, to film it and I'm worried that I won't be able to keep up and this that and the other but actually being with being with them those DS and being with other people that you're around and filming the people that you that you film it's actually a real pleasure even though it's really difficult really tough terrain yeah. really horrible environments it's actually a real pleasure to be a part of because it's just it's just a wonderful like st- really strong atmosphere of uh, positivity and and uh, and let's do this, let's get through it. It's it's, it's, it's like nothing I've ever worked on before. It's, it's brilliant. It's fucking brilliant. And like I said um, a minute ago, I'm going to say off air because we technically were, but yeah. me and Misses have been fans of it since since day one, and That's awesome. we actually look forward to it. And um, we were we weren't a hundred percent sold on the um, celebrity one when they first said, "Oh, we're doing." The celebrity one, I thought, oh, they're going to be going down the same route as all the others. We're just going to do celebrities now. But yeah, then yeah. they obviously had the um, the one in the Andes with the reg- regular folk. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's, I just think it's fucking brilliant. And yeah, I think, it, I think hear it, hear it. The funny thing is, my missus yeah. catches me chuckling to myself quite often when I'm watching it. It's certain things that the DS say that is. Couldn't be more military, put it that way. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, start sparking 
Yeah. Happy last. Pays to be a winner. Oh. See, see, this stuff's lost on me because I'm, I'm, a, I'm purely from a television background, so, so our fat stuff is sort of lost on me. But it's wonderful yeah. that that you pick up on it and you know about it. And what is really amazing about the series is the amount of people who were in the forces or who have been in the forces who enjoy it. Because that's that's a real seal of approval, really, isn't it? That you're looking for. Yeah, because yeah. if I mean the people like the parachute regiment are tweeting about it or or Instagramming about it, you think, well, that's that's good, isn't it? That's yeah, yeah. If they if they think it's a good thing and they they see it as authentic, then we've done we're doing our job at least in representing it correctly. So that like people like yourself enjoying it is the best thing we could hope for, really. Yeah, exactly. I think as well it get. In, in the beginning, I would say, it, it, it took, a, from what I saw, it yeah. took a lot of flack, but it was mainly from um, civvies that didn't really understand what was going on. Because yeah, yeah, right. they're like, well, these people aren't going to be soldiers. That's not the point, mate. They're not trying to be soldiers. They're getting no. a glimpse into what the SF have to do. And this is yeah, only yeah, a yeah. tiny little smidgen it's of what the SF tiny have bit, to do. Like, it's, like, it's like two weeks out of, what is it, a six-month a six yeah, month selection a, process. I, I never, so t- I never uh, uh, took selection. Um, no. If I, if I'm honest, if I'm straight up honest with you and everybody else that's listening, I wouldn't have made it. Um, nice. I've got fucking weak ankles for a start. I would, yeah. uh, I would have, they would have gone straight away. My nav, my navin skills are fucking terrible. Um, <laughs> would you, would you have with someone who's in the floor? infantry? Terrible navin skills. Oh man. <laughs> no way. Would you would you but, have lost a map though? Would you have lost a map? No. Oh no, I would, uh, never lost any kit. Yeah. <laughs> I said that to me missus. I was like, if they find out she's lost a map, she's in the shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, see, thing, things like that, people lose maps, they lose the numbers all the time, they lose the gloves, the hats, and all that. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, it's part of our sort of job. To obviously, we've got to film it, keep our eyes open for that stuff. And also pick it up and take it with us so we can give it to the DS or whoever yeah, we need yeah. to give it to to say, look, you know, this we found this, we found that. So it's yeah, you've got to you have, you've got to keep your wits about you because it's it's constantly moving as well. So you you can't hang around one place too long because if you if you stay st- stuck still, they'll be they'll be gone. You know what I mean? You've got to. It's yeah. a real that one of the hardest things with the with the series is trying to keep up with them all the time and and actually get ahead of them. So that you're moving, and it sounds ridiculous, but you're moving back with them, like almost backwards, so you can film them doing what they're yeah, doing. Yeah. It's 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 really tricky getting ahead of them, but yeah, you've I got bet. to. Be, you know what I mean, and 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 you've got to be really keen to see them when they go through the armband and rip the armband off VW. Um, that's what we're all hope hoping to to get and film. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You, can't, you cannot replicate anything and. And you need to get that moment when they when they rip the armband off because it's, it's it's huge, isn't it? That VW yeah, that's moment. That's a so. huge thing. The, yeah. the old um, yeah. voluntary withdrawal is. Yeah. Like so, I, I've always said, if I if I did anything like that, they would have they would have to take it off me. I would never go nah. no. That, no, no. But that that's um that's I, I was the same going through. Bearing in mind my, my training was nothing compared to their SAS training, but. No. Going through infantry training, there there were times where you're hanging out. <laughs> some military speak coming out here. When you're hanging <laughs> out and you're um you're fucking stuck in a in a hole and you're thinking, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> I, I recognise that. I, I recognise that. Yeah. <laughs> there, Mate, I recognise that from filming. There's it. a, really definitely old. a few times during basic training where, well, one of them was um, which I still to this day think is ridiculous so um you have to go through a defensive shoot and a defensive um defensive position um training scenario for a week so you have to spend three or four days digging a trench then you have to basically live in it for the rest of the the rest of the week and the, the idea is to see how you soldier at your worst when you're fucking absolutely knackered yeah you're wet you're cold and basically how you how you get get on and i was on on stag duty and it just pissed it down with rain and we were always this, this is so stupid so we were always told don't get your gore-tex out because only gays wear gore-tex and things like that 
those oh sorts of things. And you're yeah. like, oh, I, I won't put it out. I won't get it on. So I'm there fucking getting soaked wet through. Then it, then the rain stopped. And then it started freezing. So I'm there literally shaking, trying to keep my eyes open and all that sort of thing. I then get smacked on the head by our, our DS, our, one of our corporals. And he's like, yeah. why the fuck are you not wearing your gold specs? It's like, well, you told me not to. He's like, you're an idiot. Go get it on. Like, oh, you know, <laughs> woke up in the morning, it's proper shaking, and then you have to yeah, yeah, yeah. do, do a, a tactical retreat and then retake your position. Oh, it was just a dreadful time. How old were you when you did that? Um, I was 21. So I, I, I joined up when I was 20, and then my 21st birthday, I was out in the field uh, wow. during Fieldcraft 1, as we call it, which is where right. you learn the basic basics of soldiering. So, right. Yeah, twenty-one. By the age of twenty-two, I was in Iraq. Wow. Which is madness. Luckily yeah. for us and and the squadron I was with, that's we we closed it down. We handed it, closed it down. We um withdrew the British forces and handed it to the Americans. Which wow. The uh, locals didn't like. They wanted us to stay and the Americans to fuck off. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um. Damn. Yeah, it was. Wow, um, it was a it's a strange feeling, and because you're expected to be a in very commas a man, yeah. but in reality you're, you're still just a boy at, at that yeah, age yeah. anyway. Yeah, and, you are. Yeah, and you and you find that we have a lot of military blokes. We're very we got we've obviously got the dark sense of humour, which has to get you through all that sort of crap that we put up with. But you're also yeah. very childish as well. Because when you think about it, you get three straight meals a day, or you did when I was there. You didn't have to; they didn't have the pay system now. They've got a fucking pay system and all sorts now. So that right. that was all sorted out for you. Your accommodation was sorted out for you, which was like twenty quid a month that came up straight out of your wages. So you didn't see it. Yeah. yeah. So you've basically you're just a giant man child. <laughs> getting looked after. Yeah, getting yeah. looked after and yeah, just yeah. trained to um, well. Ill, really. Um, That's amazing, though, isn't it? It, it must have been. It must have been great. It must have been great um, camar- camaraderie. I think that's that's one thing I would like to see a bit more of on our series. And this yeah. is not really. It's not really a criticism, but it's it's a very serious. I, I can understand why it's got to be very serious as well. But it's the, the, a lot of the a lot of the sort of jokes and laughing about that they have in between tasks and stuff is is not really put in. And I. I I'd like to see a little bit of that put in because I think it would replicate the it actual is, real experience as yeah, well. Do you know a, what I mean? That's a huge but, thing with the with the military, and I, I've yeah. said it, um, fucking countless times that yeah, because we're all in the same boat. So we, it could be myself from I'm originally from Hereford anyway, um, yeah. so myself from Hereford, you join up. You're from Huddersfield. You meet yeah. up don't know each other but all of a sudden you're thrust together and you're living yeah, together yeah, yeah. day in and day out for 32 weeks worth of training and yeah. you're eating together sleeping together sometimes you're even shitting together um, yeah 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 and you start to build the you, you could be completely different to me but because yeah. we're both broken down to basically be re- rebuilt so they they basically strip you down that's why you have to have your head shaved first and all that sort of thing um and then they build you back up to how they want you to be which is why you find a lot of squaddies are very similar even when even when they leave like i left back in 2013 but i still go to work and people have no idea what the fuck i'm talking about (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I'll, I'll come out with sayings like, you're going to give me the gen today and things like that. And they're like, what? 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 <laughs> gen? You're going to give me the gen? What gen? The agenda. Give me the agenda. What are we doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the camaraderie that you that you find that is, is basically a, a, your, your second family. That's why yeah. a lot of us call us, call each other brother. You're part of the brotherhood. We're yeah, all brothers. Yeah, yeah. And I think that goes a long way in the whole of the military, in the fact that we're all brothers because we're all brothers and sisters. 
because um, we, we all served. But then you get that into service rivalry, which is brilliant. Yeah, um, yeah. So the funny, the funny thing is, you'll, you'll probably chuckle at this. So you've got obviously the army, navy, marines, and the air force. Obviously, pretty much the army and the navy hate the air force, which is understandable. <laughs> obviously, the paras dislike the marines because they're very similar. And then you have the regiment that I was in, which you've probably heard of is the RAF regiment and yeah. collectively everyone hates us. <laughs> <laughs> they all Why is that? Together. Why is that? Is that because is that because you're sort of seen as these sort of the flat the you know the guys flying in on a on a nice expensive toys like why is that? Um it's a it's a strange one. So we're actually hated by the Air Force as well. And it, <laughs> and it basically comes from <laughs> The Air Force hate us because we're infantry, so we act like we're part of the Army. Yeah. The Army hate us because we're part of the Air Force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and the Navy just hate everyone, I think. Yeah, um, right, right. But the, the main two that hate us the most are the Marines and the Paris and pretty much all the other infantry units. And the reason yeah, yeah. for that is the RAF Regiment... Um, <laughs> people are going to hate this, are known to be part of the big three. Right. And I hate that term, um, as do most regiment gunners. We don't really like it. Because the big yeah. three is the Paris, Marines and RAF regiment. We make yeah. up the three services that do special forces support group. So um, if the SF needs support, they obviously take out Paris, Marines and the RAF reg. Right. And there's a lot of stigma behind the RAF Reg because everybody thinks that we do airport security, which is not <laughs> what we is not what we do. There are uh, <laughs> RAF police do that. We yeah. do the external. We go out and make sure the perimeter of the airfield and a bit further out is all safe and secure for aircraft to take off land make sure there's no rocket attacks, go into yeah. all that, go into all the neighbourhoods and, and villages and whatnot and make sure everything's fucking hunky-dory. So anything right. outside the airbase that could potentially attack the airbase will be sorted out. But yeah, everybody hates us, basically. Um, the, main, the main culprit was the flight sergeant who actually did our... Um, we, we call it... Uh, uh, the gunner phase where we have passed out into the RAF regiment, but then you have to do your extra extra bits with the big machine guns and all that. But this yeah. guy is well known for, for a video where he is stood in Senny Bridge saying the Paris have their P company, the Marines have whatever they do. This is your version and it's a five mile of death followed by a fucking firefight or something like that and it's like oh why did you say that yeah. you say because it because unfortunately for us it is actually a genuinely hard end of exercise yeah, so we yeah, do yeah. do a five mile it, might, it could even be longer i just think that yeah. specific one was five miles yeah, yeah. but you they it, they don't take into account the amount of weight we're carrying we're carrying more than what we normally do because we're all pretty yeah. cool. And the firefight literally lasted about tw 24 hours plus that we were away wow. from the firefight. Oh, wow. So what they've seen, the Paris Marines and all the others, is this stupid video clip of this fucking flight sergeant going off his nut. And it's like, oh, oh man. Embarrassing. But, yeah, that's, that's stuck around for it, for a good eight, nine years, if not oh, longer. Shit. So now, it, now if you go on any of the fill your boots page or anything like that it's got you'll see something it'll be our oh, ref regiment area doing their five mile of death it's like oh we haven't heard that one before <laughs> oh, <mate. laughs> yeah oh wow well. um who who i'll ask you a question who do you think's got got what it takes to to pass selection this this series do you reckon this series i think i believe what number is she I know her name. Eloise. Eloise? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Is it? Louis? Seems, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she seems quite level-headed, very strong as well. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it tw- 23? Is it the um, the Asian girl that's from Hackney? Kim. Kim. Yeah. She, she seems, seems very, strong, very, yeah. very switched on. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think of which uh, fucking blokes are left. Is 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 oh I think it's uh Chris who's number twenty five, James oh, number one, he... and Miles number eight, I think he was. Yeah. I think that's Chris, I, I think out of the lads that's Chris is the left. other one with because number ten Chris is the one that's coming on my show tomorrow with all the tattoos. Oh, is it? But, Man, so... he's a funny guy with a bad gammy eye. Yeah. yeah. Eye. Oh what can oh, you see it? it? Did you see his it? Instagram Clip. cracked me up. It's funny, man. He's a funny, funny guy. And uh, I feel, yeah, you've got to feel sorry for him, haven't you? Getting yeah, whipped I did. in the eye like that with a, tr- tr- by a tree. Fuck. The thing was, I was saying to me, Mrs. I was like, he's doing really well here. I think, I mean, I'm not just saying it because he's coming on the show. I mean, I was like, I think he's doing really well. Next thing I know, he gets twatted with a fucking branch. I'm like, oh, that's going to hurt a little bit. Mate, and not it? I mean, it just whipped right into his face. And, and the yeah. one place you don't want it to go is right in the eyeball, isn't it? Right that's in the, the eyeball. place you don't want it going, and it fucking... Yeah, uh, horrible, poor guy. But yeah, oh look at you could have gone all the way. Yeah, sure. I think I think so. I think they yeah. quite. I was quite shocked by a couple that were were, were taken off. Um, yeah. Um, just through, I thought they were quite strong, and they think they could have done a bit further. But obviously, the DS have had, had their little moly mole that's been that, that was there, <laughs> giving it, giving them. All the, all the inside information. So they, all they the intel, yeah, yeah. They um, yeah, I mean, that, that was class. You know, when when, when that, re- that reveal was so fucking so good. I, I, I don't often go into the gallery to watch the on-rig stuff because there's two sort of separate teams that film the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, film the show. So there's on-rig and off-rig. And um, we sort of cross paths, you know, in the morning and in the evening, but we don't really sort of, mix all that much because we're off doing what we do and yeah, they're yeah. off doing what they do and um that that night when when jay was getting revealed as the more i swear it was it was so it was like we it was just so exciting like i just knew it was good it was interesting and funny and just like oh my god this is gonna be massive it was in the in the gallery and that watching it all up in real time and i was just like this is brilliant like i was it felt like i was actually watching the tv like before everyone else yeah, you know yeah. what i mean it was, it was so exciting yeah, and the reaction was mental. Everyone in the gallery was like, "Oh my god!" Like it was fucking great. It such was, a good, it, such a good twist. Because it was um, the Andy's series, wasn't it? When they had the yeah, SF Pam, yeah. Picked. yeah, yeah. Where was Pam from? Was she from Norway? I, I want to say from... Sweden, but I might Swe- that. Was she Swedish? I can't remember. Yeah, because she was she was incredible. Well, she was so yeah. fucking strong. She was brilliant. Absolutely yeah. amazing, very very. I thought, cool. I thought her reveal could have could have been done a little better, but yeah. Yeah. they 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 were still shocked, and I I, I can see why they were shocked because she literally she walked off, didn't she? And then she yeah. like came back round and then stood next to him, and he was like, "Well, what the fuck are you doing?" Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. That was a good series. That the 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 Andes was a good series. I started work on it on the on the on Morocco in Morocco. Um, yes. In the desert, and that was that was immense. That I think, like Morocco was quite special. It seems like they had like really quite normal people involved at that stage still. Like, um, and, and I, I thought it was brilliant. It was just such a like an I, that, incredible that, that, feeling. To this, to this day, that that one's my favourite in the in Morocco. It, yeah, the Morocco one. Yeah, there, there's there's the I, I still I still watch the clip every so often because I just love the way it fucking panned out. Was when they caught that. I can't remember what his name was, but he pretended that he had on his CV that he was in the parachute regiment. I was like, why would you? Why would you even yeah, yeah, yeah. do that and then lie yeah, about yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Were well, you and, fuck, and Walter anger. fucking Mitty? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I was. I was actually actually I was working the dolly in the mirror room for that for that scene. And I swear to God, I can see it. I don't know if anyone else can see, but when Billy started shouting at him. I I physically it made me jump and I was like behind the mirror room on a, on the on the dolly tracking in and and yeah. I I, remember, I can watch it now and I can see the camera just 
jumped slightly because because yeah. because Billy really scared the shit out of me while I was watching. I was yeah. like, oh shit! You, you could see wow. that because I, I spoke about it yesterday because um obviously yeah. was, yeah, yesterday we were talking about not so much that clip but um yeah Walter, Walter Mitty's in general. Um, uh, yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, so uh, we we were talking about that, but um, you could you could see the anger in in both Billy and Ant's just the That's way the that their persona was, and I was like, if there was two people in the world, you wouldn't really want to, want to fuck up, or even four people if you include Ollie and um, Boxy. But it's like, yeah. you're 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 basically stuck in a room now with two absolute. <laughs> Fucking lunatic! Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, and and you've and you've lied and pretended to be one of them. Yeah, you, and, the, and the you, best bit because obviously, um, they must have chose Billy for for that specific bit. Yeah. Obviously, Ant was was a marine and, and what have you, an SBS where yeah. Billy was two two and and a and a paratrooper. So the yeah, bit yeah. where he goes, oh, so you were you in the paras? What battalion were you in? We're brothers. And he's like, oh, shit. <laughs> Amazing. I know. It was incredible. Uh, yeah. And, and there was a couple of other moments in that series that I liked, where, where Harvey had been up the mountain and then come back down and he could see the others getting the beasted up on the hillside over there. Yeah. And uh, I saw I, I, and, and, and he, and he saw them and he made a decision not to go and join them. I remember... That and I was just thinking that's incredible. He's literally just going a wall. He's, he's, he knows we're over there, but he's going to go the opposite direction. And then yeah, another yeah. standout guy for me on that series was that John Brinkat and um, the electrician guy. And he was he was throwing up those rocks over his head. He looked like a caveman, proper like. Whoa. And then and I'm shouting at him to quit, and all his mates are telling him to oh, quit. Yeah, yeah. And, and he was like, you. You fucking cunt! You're letting your your teammates down. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Oh my god! I, I swear that that is just madness. What a like what a series. They, ended, they ended up taking the armband off him, didn't they? Yeah, 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 they took the armband yeah. off him. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was I'd never seen anything like it in my life until like I filmed all over the world doing all sorts of mad stuff, and that, and I remember f- filming Ant Middleton that day, um, and just thinking I've never I've never seen I've never seen sort of behaviour like this. It's, yeah. it's really weird. Like this guy is trying his hardest to do what he's been told to do, and he's just getting told to fuck off. Yeah, <laughs> just, just go. And it was it was heartbreaking because John was putting everything into it, and I and I, was, I felt genuinely heartbroken for him. But then, sort of, could un- I could understand also what everyone else was saying, you know, to do it for, yeah, the, for yeah. the team. So yeah, wow, yeah, it was a real baptism of fire. It's a, it's a very strange. Um thing for, for a lot of the people that are on there because one minute you're told you're doing it for yourself yeah make sure you're doing your best and then the next minute you're told well you're part of the fucking team yeah yeah, yeah. Team. It's like well hang on yeah it's you full told of me contradiction. To, be, it's to be a winner a minute ago it's full of contradiction in it and you've got to yeah. sort of i guess you've got to gauge what's going on at that moment in time yeah, because you... one thing that you, i guess you've got to rely on is that nothing is Nothing's in concrete, is it? You're like you've no, got to I've move with move with, with whatever's going on. So, yeah, you've got to be adaptable. I guess is one and, thing that and really especially teaches, yeah. when it's a show like that. When at the end you do win, yeah, not that you win anything, but you completed it. Yeah, and so you are yeah. in your head. You're like, well, I'm not giving up because I want to well, exactly. win. Exactly, because I want to win. You've got your mate on the floor who's in fucking agony, and you're like, oh, what, what, what? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yeah, difficult decisions, aren't they? Like, and you're yeah. forced. I guess you're forced into a corner where you can't sort of get out of it. So, yeah, yeah. incredible. I mean, it, it it takes a lot to go on this show. I, think, I remember Foxy was saying about it. Um, I think it was last year. He called it. I think somebody he said it was like the toughest show on television. And I, like, I actually 100% agree with him. I don't think there's another show in the world that puts you through. What this show puts you through, and, and full of autistic, like it's not none of it's fake. It's not fake. Do you nah, know what I mean? You so, can fucking tell it's not fake, bro. It's, it's little things like when they're um when they get their little bits of downtime, and they obviously got to change their socks and fucking yeah. sort their ankles out, get their compede on their blisters, and you see their blisters that they've got, and the and Man. the marks on their on their Man. hips for carrying it. I I know what those marks are like. 
Antonio. Yeah, yeah, you know. You and, crawl um, through the earth, you crawl through the brambles and that, and, and oh, you, get, yeah. you get cut to shit. We were in Scotland, we were running along, and, and there's a lot of, um, there's all like pine forests up there, but because the pine trees are so sort of weak and feeble, they're always tipping over, always falling out the ground, so there's massive holes in the ground, so you'd be running along, and you'd literally just sort of come to a stop, smash your face down into the ground, smash the camera, everything, because because you've fallen down a hole. You've just yeah. fallen down another hole. It just hole. comes out of nowhere. We had, we had a, during basic training on our, um, our final exercise, I had a, I had a similar situation. So yeah. We did our final X um, in the Beacons itself in, in from Camp Sennybridge. So um, yeah. I remember we were running along. We were about to set up an OP, I believe. And uh, I was running along. And all I heard from my corporal in front was, just mind your footing, lads. And next thing I know, I've literally gone down some sort of suck hole. And I'm yeah. like up to my waist, and I'm like, how the fuck am I supposed to get out of this? <laughs> and lads fucking pulling me out. It's like, get out of yeah. like, I'm tired. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, uh, I know the feeling. I got, I got caught in a in a in a swamp in in Scotland. I got caught in one of them, and you just yeah, all of a sudden you're up to your up to your sort of waist in it, and it's su- it's sucking you in like the mud's yeah. just got right, and you're like, how how do I get out of this? How are we getting out of this? <laughs> yeah people pulling you out that's all you can rely on yeah, so, yeah it's tough, i'll man. tell you what i enjoyed on sunday's episode see yeah. I, I like this i get to talk to the director about one of my favorite <laughs> shows was when a bravo team got to the got to the house and they yes. thought well, we can all relax now we're at the house i was like my missus yeah. was stood, they were sat next to me and i was like they're gonna get fucked up here she was like why well for a start they haven't got a century out <laughs> no. Oh wow! Yes, of course. Nobody even didn't put a century out. So that was that was who I I was filming with uh, with Team Team Bravo, and that was such a complex sort of. Uh, it's just a, a, a such a complex shoot was that because they obviously arrived at where they where they needed to arrive, and the hunter force were gathering and stuff. But the the sun was literally going down, and we couldn't we couldn't be on that separate island any longer but after nightfall otherwise we were fucked we couldn't get back to the yeah, other yeah, yeah. island so we were really on a, on actual like a race against time to to sort of do anything and then um, and it was just a fantastic i think it was one of, i think it's definitely one of the best sort of escape and evasion um uh, yeah. uh, uh what is it what is it that we've done really it just seemed to all work together right at the, at the right time they were all the, totally set up. visually it was fucking brilliant as well it looked it looked like a fucking film didn't it the yeah. sun the sun light the sun was proper going down so the light was really it's low pouring in the like sky pool, mate mate it was wonderful <laughs> yeah it was it was honestly it was like a fucking it was like a movie you just it, you sometimes you just sort of gifted these moments and that was definitely yeah. that that Saturday afternoon was definitely one of those moments. It was brilliant. It was. It was. Re- I thought just the whole thing with um, with with the Alpha team that got caught yeah. as they were coming <laughs> over to get to the island, yeah. and they just get fucking smashed. And it's like, ah. yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I just like to giggle at them. I'm like, ha. <laughs> <laughs> you just it. When they were sat there, and it was like. You can tell that none of them have got any sort of military experience. I know they've had their little bit now where they've had yeah. their little briefing beforehand. This is what you need to do if you get captured, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. they've sat down and they've gone, ah, I can have my condor moment now. I'll take my shoes off. That's it. That's and it. none of them went, we could, we could get captured here. Nobody said that. House. Nobody said that. They, they were all, they, they'd all hung up their socks and, the, you know, and they were getting warm. Yeah, they, the they thought it was the, the end. Kid. Yeah, I, I don't know what what they thought was going to happen. But yeah. Well, they, I'll tell you what they thought. They thought fucking escape and evasion, mate. Complete it. Done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done no, it, exactly. Done it, mate. <laughs> Made it to the house tonight. <laughs> Our other known sausage is Turkish. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. That's it. it. It was good. It was a good bust. Definitely, definitely one of the best busts for yeah. sure. Uh, I yeah. think. Um, I was saying today to my um, my boss at work because he he's a he's a big fan of it as well, and I was like, oh, well, I love that. I love that. I was like, I was like, just so you know, got the director on. Ah. And they were like, <laughs> to be fair, one of, the, one of the other blokes, I he's one of the engineers that um, works on the site that I do security for, and he was like, yeah, oh, I've been trying, I've been trying to get on the show, putting a good word, and I went, oh man, I was you like, don't understand so many people. Like that, 
so many people. It's, that's the one awkward thing because obviously I go off and do other filming around the, you know around the country and stuff yeah, often, yeah. And, and doing all sorts of stuff. And as soon as you sort of mention SAS, it's funny. Like everyone has heard of it, everyone's watched it, watching it, and then and everyone wants to sort of wonders whether or not they should take part in it. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. and it's what I, it's wonderful. It's really cool to hear. Is that it's like. It's a massive compliment. Like I, I was I, in a, I, I was in a, I was in a, a police custody suite the other day filming um, in Grimsby, and um, amazing, amazing place. And we, and they were just, uh, it's sort of a bit embarrassing because we just all want to stop, stop doing what they're doing. All these sort of prisoners are coming in and that, but we just want to talk to you about SS. I'm like, can we just do? Can we? Can I film you doing what you want to do? What you're supposed to be doing here? Can we? Can we do that afterwards? When we yeah, 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 yeah. No, but no, but, but it's a huge compliment, isn't it? it, it yeah, it's, yeah. It's really nice, and I, I fully enjoy it. You know, I mean, I fully, I love that people like it. I love that people like it because it, because yeah, it's, yeah. I like being a part of it. It's a massive team, and I love being a part of the team. So it's yeah. nice to hear stuff like it's, that. It's just a fucking great show in, in yeah, general, yeah. I think. Um, I mean, the the DS, the DS are hilarious, aren't they? Like Ant and Foxy, Billy and Ollie and Jay, like they are, they're absolute madmen, like. They, they're a different breed of people, and they're, uh, they're hilarious and serious and and sort of uh, fearless as well. And yeah, they're, 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 they're incredible. I, I always find with 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 any squaddy, really, I think a lot of people don't understand how to how to take how to take you either. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like like you could you could be sat having a conversation with Ant, and he could look fucking deadly serious, but you're like. Is he being serious or is 100%. he just fucking taking the piss? Yeah, 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 no, hundred percent. Yeah, 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 Because I, I, I grew up um, around um, regiment lads um, yeah. and 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 men, should I say? Because my 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 old man was attached um, to the SAS as their parachute jumping instructor. He yeah. was he was the top jump instructor in the country, so they drafted him into. Oh, teach, wow. which, it, which is a hell of a compliment to my old man. He, Isn't it? he taught the SAS how to parachute, basically. Yeah, that's 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 amazing. And, um, some of the stories he, he, he I'm, I'm desperate to get him on the show, but he's like, I'm not bloody going on the show, boy. Like, <laughs> why not? You've got the best stories. Yeah, he's yeah, like, get him on, get him on, man. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I get him on at some point. Just but, don't tell, just don't tell him it's on the show, like just. Just I'll just like, put my phone down and press record. And yeah, just do, take the just audio. do it that way. Yeah, let's have a catch get, get, up. Get a few beers down him, and he'll he'll open up then. Um, yes, mate. But yeah, you'd you'd walk into into the the pubs that my dad drinks in, and you're like, you can you can tell, even with the old older generation, you're like, oh, you're, I, you're there's something different about you. I can I can tell. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I, I remember this one time I went into um, a pub in, in Hereford called The Barrels. It's quite a long time ago now. I would have been probably 16, 17, meeting my old man in the pub. And yeah. there was this, uh, this older gentleman, Scottish, with a giant moustache that came all the way down here. And I was like, I recognise you from somewhere. And right. I was like, but I don't know where. And I was like, Sat being being a typical young lad next to my dad, I was like, that, who's, who's that man over there? And he's like, yeah. well, that, that man. I was like, yeah, who's it? And he went, that's John John McAleese. I was oh, like, wow. what, what? He went, you know, one of the guys that was in First Man In and the Iranian Embassy. I was the like, Iranian Embassy, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, fuck off. And he was like, yeah. yeah. I was like, wow. Oh, wow. Can we go and have yeah. a chat? And he was like probably doesn't want to talk to you mate <laughs> <laughs> oh that's a shame so did you go and have a chat with him no yeah we did i can't oh, good. I, I can't remember what we spoke about but yeah that's we, fucking cool man but it's like i always get i still to this day when my old man is in in the pub or whatever and then you see some of the regiment lads yeah. old older generation now sort of iranian embassy sort of era yeah and my dad walks in and they're like all right tomo Obviously, yeah, my dad's right. big Tomo to me, but it's like, right, Tomo, it's like, fuck me, dad, you know some cool people. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, imagine that, imagine that, like, those people were really in embassy, what, a, like, that was, that's where you really saw something that the SAS do, and, yeah. and you saw them do it fucking well. Do you and, know and, what I mean? 
yeah, that uh, quite. It looks like they've done it well, but apparently they fucked it up a little bit. Obviously, oh, with the, they? Uh, yeah, when when they threw the flashbang in and it set the curtains on fire and oh wow, all that right. all that sort of stuff. What's well, to my untrained to, eye? To, it to, looks... Well, even to, to even to my un- untrained eye in that sort of thing, it's like that. Yes. Fuck out! They did a good job in that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, but come on. when when they when they critique it themselves, they're like, no, we did this wrong. Well, that's we what, that's this why they so that's why they're so fucking good, isn't it? Because you've got to. Uh, You've got to critique yourself. You've got to look at what you've done and how you've done things, how you could do things better. Yeah. So yeah, but you know, credit credit to them for for, for being able to recognise where they exactly. were at fault. That's, That's amazing. amazing. Job. I tell you what is a is a is a good movie. I don't know if you've seen it. I think it's called Nine Days. Nine Days. Six Which, days. Yeah. Nine Days. Is that the one about the embassy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've seen it. Yeah, it's wonderful, Fucking isn't it? Brilliant movie. Incredible. It's on, it keeps you on the edge of your seat, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, brilliant. I, yeah, I, I, I remember saying it to, oh, again to, to the missus, I was like, oh, fancy watching this movie. She's like, what's it about? It's like, it's, oh, it's about the SES. And she went, I can't watch war movies with you. And I went, it's not a war movie for a start. Yeah. And I have a feeling that this is going to be fucking brilliant. She's yeah, like, oh. yeah, yeah. and then she was, she was more into it than I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good, isn't it? Yeah. It's really good. It's, yeah, it's, but, but on, it's the, on that really subject good. of watching military movies with, with military guys and, and that, and my missus was really into that BBC um, show, My Girl, Our Girl, even My Girl, Our Girl, with. Um, oh, I don't think I saw it. Yeah, don't bother. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I what? what I, I, got, I don't know if they had any sort of military advisor on that show at all, but. Oh, really? Was it, was it that bad? Yeah. And then they. It's certain. Well. I'm sure this has enjoyed it, which yeah. obviously is a lot. She watches yeah. some shit like Towie. Um, but there's certain little things that you're like, why is that happening? That would never happen. I know it's for TV, but it's like, that wouldn't happen. Yeah. Little yeah. things like um, in one of the series, one of the offices is doing what we call off armor, which is where you go out and check for IDs and you have your big metal detector. So you do right. all that. But yeah. the commander of the platoon is doing that with the medic. And you're like, well, that doesn't make any sense. That wouldn't be happening. No. Nah. Nah, so nah. I'm like, uh, I literally, she caught the up with it because I like, literally put on Facebook straight away the picture of Carl Pilkington with him pointing going, bullshit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, that's you see. So this is this is a reinforcement that I like from from you from you guys members when people watch it like yourself who have been in the services and know that know what we're doing is trying to replicate as as real a situation as possible because you guys will be fucking on it if anything is is out of place anything looks a bit yeah. well that's for TV or that's for you know what I mean it's so obvious isn't it so it's good like that's that's what we and I'll we tell always. You this series, I, I really got really got into it. Uh, well, I've been into it all fucking yeah. ever anyway. Yeah. But this series, I've noticed. Um, I don't know if they've been watching previous series or or what. But or the, the recruits. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Fucking hell! The, the way they've handled the interrogation phase at the yeah. minute, I yeah. was like, Jesus Christ! They're actually listening to what. They were told in their brief, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that yeah. Kim where she was. Kim was awesome. Oh, she? Basically, she was flirting with the, yeah, the yeah. interrogator. Yeah, and, yeah. And coming, at, and it was like they're doing everything that in previous series they've said. Oh, make sure you try and do this. Give them bits of information, not all the information. Yeah, when yeah, they yeah, ask yeah. you to have give them something, give them it. Yeah. Like, like you get it from time to time. What's your name? Oh, I ain't giving you my name. Well, yeah, don't yeah. Mean, don't yeah nobody's it. doing that. Nobody's doing that, are they? No, it's like they're all fucking spot on with it. It's yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, but it's interesting, I'm isn't very... it? I would, that's, that's something else we're going to have to think about and try and sort of throw in a few more surprises to try and catch people out because yeah. it's clear that people have watched the show and um, yeah. and obviously take obviously obviously take mental note or physically like writing it down and that about what to do and how to react to certain situations. So, yeah, we're going to have to up game on that I think then, aren't we? what you have done this series which I think is fucking spot on to be fair I'm just blowing smoke up your ass now <laughs> um, bringing in the 
uh, the firing. I know it's blanks and what have you, yeah, but yeah, to bring yeah. in the weapons. I thought yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Because um, obviously, throughout selection, um, you have to carry a rifle or or a dummy rifle when you're doing yeah. certain things as well. So little things like that. The yeah, fact yeah, that yeah. they have to look after a rifle for the fucking the ten yeah. days and make sure they don't fucking yeah, break it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For that, for that firing exercise where I, I can't remember what number it was, but when he fucking charged down the fucking tunnel, I was like, I think, what the fuck are you doing, sir? I think that, that was number 25, <laughs> Chris, who's in the final phase, wasn't it, I think? Yeah. That was fucking... I was like, what are you doing in that Yeah, case? yeah, yeah. He's gonna, good he's to going see that, 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 that one chick got it, got it spot on, got yeah. in the hole. And uh, I've got a funny story that I'll tell you, actually, in a second about um, rules of engagement. And, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So obviously she did everything right, saying the whole identify yourself, that sort of thing. Yeah. So it, here's my, my my old man loves this story. So it's one of the um, only times that I managed to actually fire a uh, a firearm while on tour. And uh, yeah. we were told this was in Kandahar. Uh, be very wary of vehicle born IDs, especially on moped. So we set up a, a snap. Uh, vehicle checkpoint on the um, lead guy, so I'm doing the searching if anyone comes down. So I'm already on edge and a little bit shaky, I can't lie, after having that sort of intel. Um, next thing I know, there's this fucking moped coming along. I'm like, awesome. oh, here we go. So yeah. I'm put my hand up, stop, nothing, <laughs> do it again, fucking stop, still nothing. Pops me top cover behind me. I'm like, mate, pop a flare for me. See if he stop. Pops a flare. Still no. not stopping. Still coming towards me. I'm like, fucking hell. Pull me pistol out. Pointing at it. Still nothing. And they're fucking stop. I'm like, I'm going to have to fucking shoot me a bit. Give it a cock so he knows I'm not taking the piss. Still no. nothing. Then the next, next phase, shooting to capture ground. So you shoot near them. So... Hits against the floor, dust comes up everywhere. He starts fucking flapping, doesn't he? His fucking geezer on his. The only way I can describe it is wow. off the movie Team America. Yeah. When he's trying to do the signal and his arms are going like this. <laughs> so he's doing all this. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And then next thing, he stops like he's in the fucking Flintstones with his feet. <laughs> and he skids in. He stops the good. 50 metres away, so we have to close down the gap, so I'm like that, I've got the turp next to me, I'm like, fucking ask him now why he didn't stop, etc, etc, a few metres. Apparently, his brakes didn't work. Oh my God. Oh <laughs> so I was like, my you need God. to tell him how close he was to getting, the next round was going at him. Fucking oh, hell, that's close. Yeah, Shit. but I was like, Shit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. but the fucking guy, I pull over to the guy, I'm trying to have a fucking conversation with him, it's a big fucking smile on his face. I mean, like, surely he could have, like, turned around or something. I don't yeah, know. think so. Fucking hell. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Oh, crazy. Yeah. oh, God. That, that, that's, one of, that's one of the pleasant stories. <laughs> <laughs> good, for you. good time, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. That's good, man. That's so, good. What? What else have you got um, lined up in the pipeline? If you're well, able to talk about it. I've, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got, like I was saying, I think, I don't know if we were cut off or whether it recorded or not. We were talking earlier, but I've got, um, there's a Tyson Fury documentary coming out next Thursday on ITV. So that's, that's going to be pretty big. That would be, that, that was an amazing experience following around, the, you know, the Gypsy King around the world yeah. over in Vegas, so down in Spain, around Europe and stuff. A phenomenal character and phenomenal family man. He's got a wonderful family and uh, behind him, and um, and he's been through the shit, you know, mentally, mental health with him, um, yeah. addiction, drug addiction, uh, alcoholism, and and stuff like that. And and for him to have been where he was and to rise back to the top and and have this wilder fight, this rematch in February. Wow! I mean, he won the first. I think he, you know, he won the first fight, in my opinion, oh, with him. Hundred percent. Yeah. So and he's gonna he's gonna have to try a different tack, like he's he's been saying, and uh, and see how he gets on with him. And and I can't. 
I just hope he fucking knocks him out, man. I just hope, <laughs> he, knocks him, I just hope he knocks him out and he can shut him up because there's nothing I want to see more than Tyson Fury, like, being back where... Being, like, he already is. He's already the best in the world. I just want... I want it to be officially recognised. I know he's not, he don't give a shit because he knows who he is, but um, yeah. I, I, I'd love it because, it, 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 for me, it'd be one of the greatest comebacks of all time. And I think I love, as a, you know, as, as a British lad, I love I love the underdog. I love I love yeah. a comeback. Um, and it, it, it's a true it's a true movie. It's, it's a true movie. It's the, sto- the story of his life is a fucking movie. Um, and it, it was just he, so interesting he, filming he, him he, last year for that. So I'm excited about that coming on telly. Um, and I don't really know what we've, we've got. Quite we've got. There's a there's a few things actually. There's there's a potential of filming something. Um, I think it's uh, the is it the Queen's Guards? Um, there's a potential. Yeah. Also, might might be filming. If all goes well, there might be some filming to be done with them this summer. So that could be quite that could be quite interesting. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping, yeah, that, I'm yeah, hoping yeah. to do that. Um, that be good. Uh, yeah, it'd be good. Yeah, and I think they've they've. they've uh, I think they they train up in Catrick to start with, so that's quite close to me as well. So, oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah, easy, yeah. isn't it? Isn't it? So, yeah, so, I'm, so I'm, I'm fi- fucking. Yeah, I'm hoping that I'm hoping that's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. De- I'm hundred percent looking forward to a Fury documentary. Like I, I try and watch as much stuff that he brings out. Like yeah. When he first burst on the scene, well, not when he first burst on the scene. I've always, I've always sort of, sort of followed him, uh, yeah, and then yeah. I, I thought he was a bit of a clown. He was doing the uh, Klitschko bit where he dressed up as fucking uh, Batman and all that, and I was like, to be fair, he's just selling the fight. He's making yeah, yeah, people yeah. not like him, so they want him to lose. Um, yeah, but. All that aside, his boxing skills are ridiculous. For someone who's what six foot six foot eight and he's six foot hundred, six foot nine, pounds. and he's what is he six foot nine and he's fighting where it's like what is it twenty stone? Yeah, I mean, and he and moves, he's, moves like he's a fucking flyweight. Mate, he moves like he moves better than Muhammad Ali did, if you ask me. And I, yeah. I mean, I was I've never seen Muhammad Ali move live. I've seen Tyson Fury move live, and he's fucking fast. He's fast. It's ridiculous. Like, he's ridiculously fast. He <laughs> he, he, see, see what 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 was amazing about filming him, and, and I felt this was I felt like you know you know when you watch old movies of Muhammad Ali or something like that, and you yeah. sort of think, well, these are greatest. And when I was filming Tyson, I, I genuinely thought thought to myself how lucky I was because. I felt like it's future proof. This footage that I'm making is future proof because in 30, 40, 50 years' time, people look back at this stuff that I'm filming with him and they'll watch it like I watch Muhammad Ali footage. Yeah, and I yeah. felt like I thought, like for me, such a privilege to to be in to be in a position to be able to do that. Do you know what I mean? Because I thought this is just this, it, and, and especially if he wins those belts back um, and gets those belts back together, I think you know. I'm just so fucking lucky to be able to be able to yeah. just see a little small part of that. Brilliant. And when he gets those fucking bells back from uh, from, from Wilder, from Wilder. It, and beats it, 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 and then he's got to, he's got to fight AJ as well. He's <laughs> got to fight AJ. He's got to and fight AJ. No question. As much as I love AJ, yeah. and my, my missus obviously loves AJ, but um. <laughs> And Who doesn't love it? I love AJ. Who doesn't love AJ? But still, I don't think his boxing caliber is anywhere near Tyson. And no. he's another level, isn't he? Tyson's another level. You watched? Uh, well, I was lucky enough to watch um, AJ's last fight. I literally just yeah. just got home from um, Amsterdam with the missus for a birthday. We just got in, and I was like, "I'll fucking put the fight on." She's like, yeah, my yeah, birthday yeah. went, what? <laughs> shut, so. shut your mouth and put the boxing on. Um, and I thought he boxed very well in that fight, but yeah. everyone was blowing smoke up his ass again, saying that but at the end of the day, he was fighting a bloke that put on weight, that didn't need to put on weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And blew, yeah. Blew, basically, he blew his shot. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, as I mean, good as AJ is, he's still 
he hasn't had that many pro fights and he hasn't had he didn't have that many amateur fights either so he's still relatively new for yeah 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 rock, yeah boxing wise and yeah. tyson is uh, well he's grown up and he that's all that that's all they do yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah you yeah, don't yeah. get a name like tyson fury and not be a fucking fighter well, he's a, uh, in, in his own words, he's, he's a thoroughbred boxer. You know, he's, he's been bred as as he was bred as to be the, the heavyweight champion in the world. Yeah. And he's John John. His dad told me an amazing story about him being born premature, um, and 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 how he was it was the size of a half a bag of sugar. Yeah. And uh, the doctors were saying, you know, he's never going to last. He's going to die. Um, you need to get start thinking about the fact that he might not survive. And John was very adamant and uh, telling the doctors, this guy, he is going to live. He is going to survive. He's going to grow to be six foot nine. He's going to grow to be 20 stone. And he's going to grow to be the heavyweight champion of the world. And I'm going to call him Tyson after the current heavyweight champion of the world. Man, and that's what it? he said. And, and that's what he said to the doctors. And, and, and John, to tell you the story, and, and Tyson was uh, sparring in the background. And um, I, I was just like, I was blown away. I was like, wow. Yeah. That's a story, man. That's a fucking that story. Is a story isn't it? And, and he's like, great. He's, I, I, that is genuinely, he's a gypsy king. That, and if you're a gypsy king, you're the toughest, aren't you? You're the, you're the hardest. Yeah. Of, of the, you're the hardest of the lads. So yeah, he, he is what he is. Immense. <laughs> and he's just a fucking brilliant yeah. ambassador now for, for mental health and things like that. And I, and I think because of, <clears throat> I think because of his family backgrounds is sort of stopped him from getting the accolades that he should have got at the um, sports personality and things like that. Right. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. And I, I've said this time and time again, not knocking some of the winners, but yeah. some of the winners you're like, for a pun, I've never heard of you. So how are you a sports personality? Yeah. And two, you ain't got no personality. And, and and there's one thing Tyson does have his personality, right? Exactly. He's got a fucking bag full and of it. Um, so, I, yeah. I remember being back, it must have been 2006, maybe seven, when um, it was between Ricky Hatton and Joe Calzaghe to win the sports personality. And yeah. Joe won it. And yeah. To this day, I believe Joe only won that sports personality because Hatton lost to Mayweather the night before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because, yeah. no offence to Joe, Joe was a fantastic boxer as personality, but he didn't have the backing or the following of what Ricky had. No. So Ricky Hatton would take, like, 35,000 screaming Brits to Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's huge. Uh, Ricky, I've, yeah. I've, I've, been, I've been sliding into Ricky Atten's DMs. I'm still waiting for him to reply. I'm like, come on, Mate, my he's, shirt. He's left you on the scene, has he? I, I, yeah, I, uh, Tyson trained at Ricky's uh, gym quite a bit when we were in Manchester filming him. And um, he came in occasionally, did Ricky. He's a fucking awesome, awesome guy. Yeah. So I hope, I hope you do get him on because he's, he'd be mad interesting to talk to. He's yeah, been, yeah. seen it all, hasn't he? He's, he's one of these no, three men. Yeah, we, for the for the sole reason of why I started this podcast was yeah. to obviously, like I said earlier, to get myself out of my um, depression rut. To have someone like Tyson or Ricky, because Ricky suffered really badly with depression after his loss to uh, Mayweather and then yeah. then Pacquiao. And yeah, yeah, I, I just believe that fighters in general and and. Uh, top athletes have that mindset to readjust and reset themselves yeah. and especially fighters i think yeah and i've interviewed a number of fighters now um well i'm quite lucky and and the, what the reason why i say i'm lucky is my brother uh, darren works for a restaurant called the beefy boys in hereford which is yeah. one of the best burgers you all ever taste if I'm you're going. ever in Hereford, go there man and ask, ask for ask for darren he'll hook you up i'm going um, i'm going I, I love burgers man the burgers are my favorite meal so i'm in there yeah in the, the the beefy boys i think i'm not sure where they got ranked this year but a 
couple of years ago, they were ranked number one in the world. Oh, shit. They right. are, they are to, to quote the Welsh, they are lush. Um, yeah, lush, man. I can't remember where I was going. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, thanks to my brother working at the Beefy Boys, he, he's in good um, communications with a, a number of the Welsh fighters, the yes. likes of Jack York, um, Mason Jones, uh, Jack Marshman, that sort of those, those yeah. sort of guys. So yeah. I've been lucky enough to get Jack on on the show, Very and good. and and Mason Jones, who is uh, another up and coming fighter, who actually got guest of the year for the for the Granite Zero podcast. Amazing, <laughs> Mate, right? Mason was phenomenal. Was in mind, similar to how we're talking now. Well, I've never met you, and I never met Mason before. I had a conversation with Mason. It was a proper Joe Rogan experience podcast, yeah. put it that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah, was yeah. three and a half hours long. Oh, my God. Wow. I, wow. Had to, I, had to, I had to split it down into two parts because the way yeah, I yeah, upload yeah. it, I upload onto, onto a format called Podbean. I need to find a new format, I think, because it will only go to 90 minutes and then you have to um, basically to... stop and then start a Start again. Again. Ah, and, I like that. I like the, I like that long form thing though. It's good. It's good. It's what we need more of a bit more in depth like chat and yeah, it's good. It's it's, interesting. I like it. Like most most of my podcasts between hour, hour and a half, which is good. Sometimes yeah, yeah. you're you're in a flow and you're like, oh, I could go for for hours here. <laughs> I could talk about anything. And that's why I love um doing this now. Yeah. I get to chat to um people i've never I'd never dream of chatting with and yeah, um, one of them um i spoke to, i spoke about her uh on the last podcast as well with um with yeah. rob um was liz carmouche who i don't know if you've heard of liz um no, she is a former u.s marine she's officially the first ever woman to set foot in the ufc octagon oh she, wow she fought Ronda Rousey for the title, and obviously she came out first. So she, technically, she was the first woman in there, um, the title. And and I, I I watched that fight. Unfortunately, she lost, but I watched that fight with a load of U.S. Marines while I was in Bastion. Yeah. And it was just, That's and a then, on then it. to be able to in yeah, you know, I say interview. It's not an interview. I, I prefer to have it as a chat. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. I well, have, have an informal chat with 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 her was was just brilliant. And then I bet it was. It, it's it's quite, just a story, been... quite a historic thing, isn't it? I mean, it's quite interesting. I was, and and we do this a little, We cover it a little bit on um, on SSU Dares Wins. I think you know the the sort of whole man woman boxing thing and yeah. It, and, and and I wondered, you know, I did wonder to myself, will there be ever a time where we do see sort of mixed MMA and mixed sexual uh, MMA? Do you know what I mean? Will will there be a time when we have men versus women in there and stuff? Because I, mean, I, I I can see it sort of happening. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it could, it, it could, hundred percent. But I think it'd be difficult. But I, but I could it'd see it'd be I very difficult because obviously. We 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 saw the discussions the other, the other week with um, just the physiological differences between yeah, yeah. blokes and chicks. So I know you get the the freaks of nature that some of these CrossFit uh, chicks and that that are fucking built like houses, yeah. uh, and uh, and obviously you you get some freaks of nature like a, like a Chris Cyborg in in the in Bellator who could quite easily beat a lot of men yeah, but yeah, then yeah. but then you think if she was at her level and then goes into the male division and fights one of the top ranked men yeah 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 would she do as well it's like well that's the question so that's the question isn't it would they would they would they and that i think i don't know it'd be it would be an interesting to see I could, and I, and I think the the women would definitely like a shot at that. I think I think the women would prefer the shot than than the blokes. And and exactly, we, we discussed, exactly. We did. I discussed it with um with Mark, or should I say, Sybil? Yeah. Um, oh, did you? Yeah. Because um, yeah. uh, Mark came on on the show, 
didn't he? He's a good guy. What a top class guy he is, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, awesome, great. awesome, mate, awesome. Yeah. Um, my missus kept saying, "Oh, you got a new boyfriend?" I went, "Yeah, he's brilliant." <laughs> <laughs> he's got um, help. <laughs> but yeah, we were. Yeah. Where were we going with it? Um, uh, oh, we're talking about, about the milling. Yeah. Um, and how hard it how hard it is for what we would say for the for the males is well if i was doing it with a chick that sounded wrong um <laughs> uh, in my head because i was always brought up I, i'm not going to punch a girl in the face yeah 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 but then you have to try and put it in your head that that's the enemy and you have to hit the girl in the face you've been yeah. told hit the girl in the face hit the girl in the face yeah. um but it's just just after that, it's like, did I win because I'm fighting a woman, or did I win because I'm just better? And, yeah, 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 yeah. And Mark was actually saying that when he was getting ready to do his million, he was trying to get himself psyched up um, by thinking about all the uh, homophobic slurs that he's had thrown at him, all the hate, things yeah. like that. And he's yeah. working himself up, and then they pair him up, up up against the other gay contestant, and he's like, well, I can't really use it any of that now <laughs> <laughs> oh man shit and uh, yeah I, yeah we 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 had a good good old chat um when mark was on but one thing i i i said to him i was like that they, they jacked out on you that's another term for you I jacked out yeah go on um, they jacked out on him in the fact that and that i think it was the same with uh number 18 because they were the tallest and the they have obviously had him at the back yeah, and I was like, jacked out on you because you you were fucked. I I was like, I reckon you could have gone further yeah. if you hadn't have been. Because then he told us that they obviously did that whole task like four or five times, where we only see it a couple of times on on the yeah, TV yeah, show. Yeah. And he yeah. was like, we were we were properly fucked, and I was like, yeah, yeah I mean, tell. Let me just tell you, the, the, these recruits like I don't, I don't know. I've got. All, I, I tell you, I've got utmost respect for the recruits, but sometimes they do say stuff like, "Well, we had to do it five times. We had to stand there for eight hours," and and it's ne- they always do a little bit of an exact. It's like come, you didn't. It wasn't eight hours stood in the fucking water. You know, you were in there. <laughs> you were probably in there ten minutes. <laughs> it probably felt like eight hours. Because yeah, I'm sure it must. It definitely felt like it, but it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I can't. I would never. I would never say that to them. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll ping you a message and say, you lied to me. You said you did it five times. You did, you did, you did, you did, you did one rep and failed. Yeah, they, I know they, what, they did, what they did do is that they get very upset if things are, if, and they get very upset when things are cut out of the programme. But, you know, we've yeah. got like 48 minutes to get, especially at the beginning of a series, we've got yeah, like 48 yeah. minutes to get through 28, 25 recruits, plus four DS, five DS and a mole. Um, and all the other stuff that you've got to sort of cram into that 48 minutes to explain the series and what it is. And then it's difficult then when, when people are saying, oh, we, we, we don't see all the tasks. It's because there just simply isn't enough time, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it, it, it's, a, it's a pain. A lot of people this, this year have been saying, oh, we need to do more episodes and stuff like that. But, but then you don't want detra- to dilute it too much. You want it to be yeah. strong and concentrated, you know what I mean? So it's a really fine... Hard you, balance you want, of what you do. You want him. the um. You want the you trying to get me words out here. Yeah. You want it so that you actually want to watch another yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to be sick of it, do you? Yeah, you don't want to be like, oh well, like I could see some of the argument with it where you like, oh, I could do it another episode now. That could have done with another episode. But yeah, yeah, yeah. when it yeah. when it's done, you're like. Oh, I can't wait for the next series. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you're excited then for when yeah, you yeah. pop up, even if it is the celebrity one. If you're going to do that, I don't know. Um, <laughs> if there's if it, if it pops up, SES who dares win celebrity special, or, or yeah. one of the DS puts a picture up with all the celebrities with their faces already blacked out, and you're like, ooh. Oh, what's this? What's going on? That. We've we've filmed we've filmed we've already filmed the celebrity special, so that's that's going to be on. Who knows when that's going to be on? Hopefully, hopefully it'll be around Easter time, I suppose. Isn't it usually around uh, like the stand up to cancer and things like that? Yeah, but I don't think I don't think, as far as I'm aware, it's not 
part of Stand Up For Cancer this year. So it's just a standalone thing. So uh, oh, Channel, right. 4, Channel 4 gave it its own sort of series without the sort of charity bit. Which is, I mean, it's just cool. I think it's always, obviously, it's always nice to represent something as cool as Stand Up For yeah, Cancer. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but still, just, just the fact that it's been asked to back, come back for a second series is awesome. Um, so, yeah, it's massive. I, I, I do I do. I do I bet I, as much as I was a bit poo poo in it when I yeah. first saw the um the the first the first one when I actually started watching it and you realise that yeah that they're actual humans to be celebrities they're not celebrities as yeah, such. yeah 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 like watching yeah. um yeah watching Wayne Bridge go from not being bad. a pro- professional football player to then you realise that all these demons that he's fighting and you're like yeah. oh, fucking hell. Yeah. And yeah. then even even Victoria Peddleton that she puts herself in that much fucking pressure yeah. because she wants to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's always yeah. It was yeah. like fucking hell. Well, mate, I said this, then, this, the and, next series, the next series will be fucking. You're gonna be mind blown. It was it's it's just amazing. It's gonna be so it's gonna be so good. Can't wait, can't wait. I also really enjoy watching celebrities get fucked over. <laughs> <laughs> Like, uh, I, yeah, I'm yeah. actually he's actually a bit of my pleasure is um, yeah, yeah. Sam Thompson. So watching Sam Thompson, watching him because you can tell that he's just a naughty schoolboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. when he's back chatting with Ant, you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep going, keep balls, back chatting. Nah. He had some balls doing that. I thought I, I had full, I had full respect for Sam Thompson. I think he's a wonderful, wonderful. Guy, but he, had, he was fucking. I don't know what was up. He was just getting was like, shut up, stop what you're saying. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, he was brilliant. <laughs> He's such a good guy, in there. He's hilarious. Yeah. Fucking funny. Um, yeah, I, I loved. I love this. I love the celeb version. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it. It'd be. Uh, it'd be good to see it back. I can't believe that this series is nearly finished, man. I can't believe it. Oh, no. Like it's the final one on Sunday. We got it, mate. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's been it's been fucking brilliant. Um, oh yeah, I was gonna I'm I'm gonna bring it up now anyway because yeah. I was gonna talk about it with my brother. Um, yeah. but we'll we'll do an episode of that anyway. But like you were saying, it's always good to do um stuff for charity, and I'm gonna plug it on my podcast for the first time. I've put a few posts out already, so I'm um organising a charity football match at the minute. Um, which is going to be Granite Zero, obviously. Uh, a few, of my, a few close buddies of mine uh, that served. A few um, veterans. Uh, my brother's going to play, and Big Tomo himself is going to go in the sticks for a little bit. All sixty-nine years of him, right. and we're we're going to be playing at the Maidstone uh, Ground, which is the Gallagher Stadium, and we're playing against Spurs legends. So a fucking uh, a Spurs legend team against the Granite Zero team, and it's going to be we're doing it for Mind, which is yeah. a mental health charity, and uh, a veteran-run charity called Rock to Recovery. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to be um, smashing that out. We're just trying to get all the um, deposits in because uh, you got you got to get some monies in to get Spurs to play, but a higher the pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to get a fucking kit sorted, but my brother's on that, luckily. A um, couple of sponsors, and then uh, the rest of the monies will be going to those two fantastic charities. And I'm, That's I'm, wicked. I'm man. actually buzzing for it because my missus gets the ump with me because I do this all the time. I'll get something in my head and I just do it. Like <laughs> um, a couple of years ago, I did um, a white collar boxing match. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. I, all, I I wanted to avenge my loss. Basically, I uh, lost in the in an Air Force boxing match because I was okay. out of shape, not ready. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I basically got told by uh, my sergeant that if I didn't do the fight, I'd get charged for not representing the Air Force. So oh, I wow. my fight. <laughs> and they went, "Well, we'll put you we'll put you in at whatever weight you're at, and you just crack on." I was like, "All oh, oh, right." Yeah. I I fought at light heavyweight. Which is funny considering I'm five foot six, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I got stopped in the in the second. Uh, to be fair, he yeah. was he was a he was a good fight. He was fighting at the Olympic gym in Manchester as well. So, 
he, he, he gave me a bit of a pasting in the yeah. second round. I beat him yeah. in the first round, but then my legs went. But yeah, 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 yeah. I, got, I got in my head. I was like, I want to do. A, I want to. I want to do another fight. And I managed to sell a good number of tickets. Call it. Um, a good fight. Not the guy in the uh, in the which was good, which is not bad with uh, fucking sixteen ounce gloves and headgear. But yeah. um, it yeah. was a fucking brilliant night. Fucking brilliant night. I had my, my, everyone around me. And so I did that for charity. Before that, I did one of those Spartan races. And me oh, being yeah. me, I was a bit of an idiot. I went, well, I can do 5K. I can do 10K. I might as well go the whole hog and do the 20. She was like, yeah. you don't like running? I went, yeah, I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> so I did that. did the boxing match. And then the other day, I was like, fuck it. I'm going to get this football match started and, and sort out. And uh, my, yes, one of my mates who, who's a, a big Spurs fan, he he was having his hair cut by my missus. And he was like, oh, uh, Tomo's doing a good job on that charity football match. She was like, he's doing a what? <laughs> <laughs> I get well, pinged the text. What's this fucking charity football match? How much yeah, is it yeah. going to cost me? Or it's not going to cost us fucking anything. Busted, um, we're going to get Busted. sponsors. We're going to get it as fucking sorted. She was like, oh, all right then. <laughs> Busted, isn't it? Yeah, oh, wow, that's good. That's I, think, good um, I think number 10, Chris said, I'm going to speak to him tomorrow just to see if he's just pulling the wool. But he said he might uh, tap on the phone. That would be good. Get a oh, couple yeah. of names. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, Brad Brad Pickett, who, uh, you, former UFC fighter. Wicked. He said yeah. he said he might he might play as well. So a bit cl- I, I, I said to him, I went, "Don't worry, I won't ask for your phone numbers to put in the fucking WhatsApp group. I'll just text you myself." Yeah, 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 yeah. I think you, you want to <laughs> you want to ask Mark. I tell you what, you want to ask Mark first because he's a good footballer. He's a good fo- he's a decent footballer, is Mark? I think Mark and um, oh, yeah. Richard and that from series series four, both good football players. I know they enjoy it. I'm fucking terrible at football. I played a bit of rugby, but I cannot. I cannot play. I I used to think I could play football, but I was shit. Yeah. <laughs> I was terrible. Yeah. I, but, yeah, I'm I'm not too bad a player. But yeah, I wouldn't right. say I was. I wouldn't say I was. I played at a decent sort of. I played like West West Midlands sort of level. Oh, did you? That's Midlands decent. Midlands, See, that's decent. But, that is good. But that, uh, uh, that's about as high as I got. My uh, yeah. my old man was um played for. Kidderminster Harriers and oh wow yeah yeah um he actually played professionally in Malta when he was a schoolboy which is quite funny um, yeah how funny yeah but he um because obviously football back in back in when he was playing what obviously the the names were big but they didn't get paid as, no, as well it was, it, was, it was better off my old man was better off joining the military and still playing than it, than he was to make a proper go of it yeah, so, yeah, yeah, but yeah. he did to be fair he played combined services um he he was a he's a fucking brilliant goalkeeper to be fair he's a very old man he even played he played in a uh in a in a in a sas team i believe that was run by the bloke that was the head of security at old trafford um, wow but, but well, he was he is now or was now anyway. Yeah. Um, but my yeah. old man was he was like, oh, we got a, we got a game coming up. Do you mind playing in goal? My old man was like, yeah, no problem. Um, <laughs> he, he he only played like twenty minutes or something, and then he had to come off. I think he got an injury or something, oh, and then yeah. and then they lost. I think it was about eleven nil. My man was saying, and Shit. I was like, who, who are you playing? And he went. Oh, we were, we ended up playing against the class of '92, so when ah. we were all in the youth side, so we were no playing way. against Bex and all that. No Absolutely way. Bang. Yeah. Oh, hell, I mean, if but you're going to get beaten by eleven, at least fun. they've got, at least they'll have some fucking names in that team. If it were the Neville brothers, Scalzi, Bolton, yeah, Giggs, exactly. Beckham, fucking hell, every single one of them players, Lee Sharp, the whole lot of them were amazing, weren't they? Fucking brilliant, amazing team. Incredible I can now team. look at them. I know. <laughs> what time are we on? How long have we been chatting for? Don't get me started. I'll be here. <laughs> well, what, what, how long have we been chatting for, do you think? What is it now? 
10 36. We are now one hour 24 minutes in. Look at that. Buzzing. Yeah. That's good, isn't it? Hell of a, hell of a trash, mate. Isn't it? Isn't it? So, so However, what's next for you, lad? We'll what have you? to shoot at some point. Yeah, what, what's next for you what's then that? after the, after the, what, after the, um, the charity football game and stuff. What are you wanting to do with uh, with the podcast and stuff? How's it all going? How many people are, are sort of hearing it and seeing it and, and stuff? Um, to be fair, I, we've had over four thousand listens or downloads, which yeah. I'm, I'm fuck it. I'm I'm chuffed with. I was well. Man, that's that awesome. Story. I know. Um, I know there's a few other uh, sort of military style podcasts out there that have had obviously more, um, but yeah. like, I, I've always said that's not why I started doing it. I'm not yeah. I'm not doing it to get fucking famous. I'm not doing it to be the next Joe Rogan. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I'd be quite happy just doing this myself and having my mate Chris back home listening to it. Um, but <laughs> does Chris listen to it? Though? The way it's um, the way it's sort of. Uh, sort of increased in in um, the the amount of followers that I have um, and the, the amount of downloads. It just seems to be going up and up, and I'm and it does help when you have the likes of um, uh, like Nakojo yesterday, um, yeah. Rob Ingram, obviously because he's got quite a big following. Yeah, uh, yeah. the likes of Brad Pickett. Um, yeah. And 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 the ones that I like to call the blue tick brigade. If you get some of those on, and they and they put a little um, yeah, a little yeah, tweet yeah. out or or an Insta story share or anything like that, it, it fucking all helps. And yeah, yeah, I bet. And it's just, it, to be fair, I'm just, I'm just fucking a fanboy who's happy to have anyone on, but it's weird yeah, yeah, to yeah. talk to me. And yeah. we've had it. We've had one or two that haven't been aired because the chemistry and 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 all that. I didn't want them to come across as a fucking dickhead on the show, and I didn't want to be coming across like I'm a dickhead on the show. So yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they've been they've been hidden. Um. <laughs> well, I guess I suppose so. I suppose so. It's, it's, a, it's a learning curve, isn't it? So you yeah, like, yeah. And, and, and you you you've you've obviously found your groove in it, and um. And a, and a sort of enjoying yourself, and I think that's that's wicked. That's that's the that's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, then... it's, it's it's a it's a huge huge step for me. Yeah. Um, um, confidence wise as well. I've never been very good at interact. Like yeah. w- once I once I open up, I'm I'm fucking life and soul. I'm, yeah, 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 I'm yeah. a bit of a fucking like I say, like I'm a bit of a silly goose. So I take the piss. All yeah. that sort of thing. If I went into the pub, I'm not like that until I've had a couple of beers. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah. now I, I found that like when I when I first started interviewing, I was a bit nervous. I think my first proper interview was Jack Short, and yeah. he's an up and coming guy coming into the UFC, and I'm like, well, what the fuck am I supposed to talk about? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't, yeah, want, yeah. I don't want to just be sat there talking uh, UFC with him. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But it, it ended up being a fucking brilliant, like all the fighters I've I've had on, they've all been so down to earth. Yeah. In fact, yeah, fucking yeah, all yeah. the guests I've had on, it, yeah. it doesn't matter who they who they are. Yeah. I had um, uh, Josh Bridges. Do you, do you follow CrossFit? Yeah. Jo- no, uh, I, you know what? I'm, I'm not. I'm. I've never really heard of CrossFit until I started working on SAS two days. Wait, <laughs> I swear to God. Uh, I've, I've been to the gym and and I and I go to the gym and I lift weights and stuff, but I've never had any sort of interaction or I've never even heard of it until I say this. And I'm yeah. like, what is this thing? It's amazing. I mean, it's massive, isn't it? CrossFit is fucking huge yeah. now, so yeah. you can't really escape from it. But um, it's an interesting sport. It's a good sport, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. So he's one of he's one of the top guys there, is there? Yeah. He's uh, well, he has been for a number of years. Has it? He's yeah. also a former Navy SEAL. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I I like him. I, I like I liked him before. I, I had a bit of a fucking thing with CrossFit. I didn't really like it for a very long time. But right. that because of all their all the shit coaches that he had. I've discussed it right. far too many times on here. Um 
But I even said that to him. I went, I've got nothing against CrossFit now that I've researched it a bit more. It was yeah. mainly the, uh, the, the coaches and what have you. But right. he was always one that I sort of sort of stood out to me. And I was like, I, I fucking think you're brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I literally did the same as what I've done to you, everybody else. I pinged him a message and went, fancy coming on my show? And he was like, yeah, definitely. I was like, yeah. fucking hell. Jesus. <laughs> See, that's got to be good for your confidence and your self-esteem and stuff. If you're asking oh, yeah. people to do things and people are saying, yeah, why not? That's great, isn't it? It's fucking brilliant. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and like you said, you've had, you know, you've had depression and stuff and, and doing stuff like this where you can talk to people about similar circumstances, similar similar experiences and stuff. It's got to be a good thing, hasn't it? It's wonderful. It's just connecting people and it's great. Yeah. I mean, I, similar, I've had, I've had the similar, I've had similar stuff. I, and it, and then, and I'm out of it now. I'm, I'm full, you know, I'm fully out of it now. And um, I was speaking to a young kid earlier. My, a mate of mine messaged me on Facebook Messenger, and he was like, "We speak to my this lad who I know. He's 18 years old, and um, he, he like he, he's doing. You're doing what he wants to do, and and um, and he's just having a few problems with alcohol and drugs and stuff at the moment. And uh, I think he just needs pointing in the right direction. Blah blah blah. So I give him yeah. a call this afternoon, and I. I spent I spent on the phone with him this afternoon. Like we're talking now for a good hour with a stranger, just chatting shit about what 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 he needs to do, what I need to do, and I'm learning from him, and he's learning from me. It's fucking brilliant, isn't it? It's just fucking yeah, great. That's what, that's what life's about, isn't it? Yeah, I tell I tell you a good one for that was um from the show again. Um, yeah. uh, Kirsty, who was number eleven. Now I I sent her a message pretty much at the start of. When you when the show started uh, yeah. a, a few weeks ago, and like I did with quite a few of the um, contestants, I was like, well, I'll ping her a message because it's a big show. We can get a good chat on. I enjoy the show. I'd love to get the inside and all that. Um, obviously, yeah, yeah. I had uh, um, Mark came on. Chris is coming on tomorrow. I was going to have Eloise and is it Bethany? Bethan, the, yeah. the sisters. I was yeah, yeah. going to have those on, but their um, PA or something said that they're not allowed to do it. And I was like, well, that's bollocks. Whatever. All right. All right. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I almost put, you know, it's not an interview. I'm not asking for an inside scoop or anything. But yeah. I thought we would have we would have had a good dynamic because she's really close to her sister. Yeah. Or the sister. You've got really close. Close to your me, brother, my, right? me and my brother are really close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Good, but Makes anyway, sense. in the future it might happen. But yeah, I yeah, also yeah. Um, yeah. messaged uh, Kirsty, and literally last week she went. She literally popped up. I'm really sorry, I, I um take so long to get back to you. I'd love to come on the show. I'm not really that good at talking um, publicly. Yeah. What have you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I was like, she was like. How 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 does it work? Do I come to you or do you come to me? I was like, no, we do it by Skype, so you can be wherever you're comfortable. Um, yeah, and we literally just talk about anything and everything, really. Um, let, let me know when you're when you're free, and I'll, I'll I'll book you in. She was like, yeah, no problem. And then she came back and was like, I can do such and such date, and I was like, well, uh, could you do maybe the nineteenth? She's like, yeah, definitely. So I was like. Oh, yeah. she, she'll be great she'll be really interesting to talk to because her experience is quite um quite unique i think on this series yeah and, um, i think so uh, and, I, and i and i genuinely mean that i think she's wonderful um and and she has got a very unique insight into how it how it's all sort of works because because she's had a, i think she's had quite a different experience from from a lot of people you know Yes. And um and 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 yeah, I'd I'd be I'd be really keen to listen to her to her talk about it and and stuff because I think she probably has learned quite a lot about herself in the process. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like massively. A lot of people who do the course obviously come away with learning about themselves, but I think she has done a lot. She's had to, yeah, she's done a lot. I think she had to look at herself quite a lot because because of what um Ant said to her and it, and it's you know it's on TV like. She 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 had to she had to listen to, to answer some pretty like damning things to her, and I think that's difficult. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, if when you hold anyone yeah. in, on a pedestal and they, like, you know what I mean? It's and, like, and, it's and like they quite... said. It's like um, we'll, we'll see how she copes with a bit of criticism or something. But it was along yeah, yeah, those yeah, lines. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, I, and 
I'll, I'll bring it up to her as well when I finally get to chat with her. But the, the yeah. whole <laughs> fuck off, this is boring. <laughs> right, not that. No, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's, it's, my aunt's trying to test her. My aunt's trying to push her. But yeah. for her sat there at that time would have been fucking horrendous because. I mean, she she'd no doubt hold the guy up to in the higher stage. You know what I mean? And, yeah, and yeah. It'd be, it'd be horrible. I know if if you did that to me, if anyone did, said something like that to me, and that I was boring, I, it'd be really difficult to to come back from. I think uh, that actually brings me back to what I think it was in series one with yeah. um, the Scottish, the other the other Scottish guy that was one of the original DSs. I can't Colin, remember his yeah. name. Colin. Um, yes, and he, and, he, and he sat there, and the, and the flight, and he goes, it says here on your, um, because they made him do a, a fucking A4 sheet, tell me about yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he right. had on there some, like, I can beat, I can beatbox. And it, and they sit there, and they go, go on in. And he start, and they both, they both got fucking straight faces, arms folded, listening to this guy beatbox. And he goes, what's the fucking point in that? <laughs> <laughs> Totally shot, shot down, just shot yeah. down. Yeah, 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 awful. <laughs> awful. Or, or one of them was a comedian, and he comes in, and he goes, so "You're a comedian." And it's like, fucking hell. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Tell us a joke. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, a joke. Shit, yeah. Well, that's, that's really good. Cool. Yeah. Oh, so good. To me, to be fair, Phil, I'm gonna have to fucking call that a day. As much as I want to fucking carry on talking, I've got, I've got to get early. To get on my bike to get a, my regular human job at half well, past four in the morning. Oh Treating bless myself. you! Fucking hell! I've got, I've got, um, I'm not working until tomorrow night. I start work at seven pm tomorrow night in back in police custody. So yeah, treat yourself. It's really treat good. yourself. Really, for that yeah, one. yeah, so but, I'm looking forward to it. It's been good so far. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Listen, mate. Um, thank you so much for having me on. It's been wonderful chatting to you, and I hope you enjoy Sunday night's episode. And celebs episode, and I hope you've watched Tyson and all that stuff. Wicked, I'll be yeah. watching it all, mate. I'll be watching <laughs> it all. Fucking, oh, we've got actually, we've got got a new got a new series of ambulance coming out as well, um, um, which we filmed up in Liverpool. So that that's that's good. That's a good series. I like that one as well. That, so uh, I'll have like to make off. sure I watch those. So, yeah, two, yeah, here we go. We're getting on to another subject now. Two two of my close buddies are both paramedics. So oh, that'll are they? Be a, that'll be a good. Um, That'll be a good uh, show for me to watch. Now, para, para, now the, the the paramedics they do such a like. I'm not just saying this, but they what a job they do, man. Oh, I know. Tell me country, about it. it. They keep this country going, mate. It's incredible. Yeah. Well, we we um on on the site that I work at, um there was a, a dreadful accident on last Wednesday where yeah. a cyclist was coming round the roundabout. And someone caught to the junction of the roundabout, but didn't look enough and just oh. fucking twatted her off her bike. And, oh, man. Um, yeah. The yeah. fucking uh, uh, rapid response paramedic was there within like five minutes, I think. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, I, I think the fact that he got there that quick has uh, saved that, that lady. There's life. a lot. Yeah, yeah, um, no doubt. No doubt. It's all it's so, t- so yeah. time critical, isn't it? So. That's yeah. off to him. All right then, mate. Well, thank you very much. Thanks again for having me on. No, thank and, uh, you for coming on. Thank you for giving me your time. It's my pleasure, mate. It's been my absolute you're, pleasure. You're welcome, uh, Phil, you're welcome on any time, and I'll make sure my bro- my big brother's here next time as well. Yeah, it'd be sure nice to meet him as well. Wicked, yeah. mate. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, Good luck, mate. See you, mate. Bye-bye.